Back to follow-up segment tonight, the Talking Points Memo, the winners and losers in the Syrian controversy, which, of course, ended in a deal to take chemical weapons away from the Syrian government. First of all, the tyrant Assad is a big winner. USA could have pulverized his military machine, but because of the so-called compromise, the USA will not bomb him. Therefore, Assad remains in power, fighting the vicious civil war protected by Russia. And that country is the other big winner in the Syrian situation. Putin inserted himself as a compromiser, even though it is Putin who's supplying Assad with weapons and encouragement. So Putin is telling the world he'll help take chemical weapons away from his pal. But many are skeptical, as they should be. Nevertheless, Putin is a winner because he's calling the shots, so to speak. Other winners, Congress, because it will not have to vote to humiliate the president. Whether you like Barack Obama or not, emasculating him in front of the world, not a good thing for the USA. Also, the mullahs in Iran win because they can now tell their people the USA is weak. And any dissenters inside Iran, no, they're not going to get any help from us. So the mullahs win. Now for the losers. Those fighting Assad inside of Syria have been dealt a setback. Great Britain, big loser because it's shown the world it will no longer right grievous wrongs. Finally, President Obama, who has looked weak, throughout the entire mess. Even if you like the president, you must admit his leadership is faltering. According to a new ABC News poll, just 36 percent of Americans approve of the way Mr. Obama handled Syria. In addition, there's been some unbelievable hypocrisy. Congressman Keith Ellison, Washington Post writer Eugene Robinson, Senator Dick Durbin, Senator Barbara Mikulski, all object to drone warfare against Al Qaeda, but all support the president using military force against Assad. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. The group that killed 3,000 Americans on 9-11, you can't target them from the air by drones. Oh, no. But Assad, who's killing his own people, should be bombed. I mean, come on. That's ridiculous and unbelievably partisan. When human lives are on the line, politics should not be. As Talking Boys predicted last week, there will be no military strike against Assad, even if he doesn't give up all his gas. That story's over. And we Americans do not have another military conflict. That is a good thing. But most of the other stuff surrounding the Syrian story is anything but good. And that's a memo.